To appreciate City Escape is to respect how well the vision for it was executed. However, in order to say that its vision was well executed instead of poorly executed, one would need an idea of what poor execution looks like. This brings us to Sonic Force's first level, Lost Valley, which does an alright job of teaching you how to play the game, but fails at nearly every other aspect that made a level like City Escape so engaging. To get a better idea of what poor game design looks like, we're gonna break down Lost Valley to its core, just like before, from the beginning of the level all the way to the end, starting at the first cutscene for context. Eggman monologues about his hatred for Sonic and how his most recent invention will allow him to finally conquer the world. <laughs> we see him walk through multiple test tubes, which look like failed experiments for the invention he speaks of before we're given a look at it ourselves, which is more of a tease than anything else. While this cutscene definitely establishes the upcoming conflict and lets us know what Eggman's motives are, it's far from iconic because of how many cutscenes from other Sonic games are just like it. With this invention, I can expand the Eggman Empire across the globe and conquer the world! <laughs> now I just need to harness its power. Eggman Land will finally come to be! <laughs> I'll harness their hyper go on power and then nothing will stop me! I know I say that every time, but this time really. The tie-in this cutscene has to Lost Valley is explained in the first few seconds of the level. Sonic! Eggman's forces are surging into the city! We need you here now! Hold on, Tails! I'm on my way! I appreciate the build-up to finding out what Eggman's new invention is, but there's little about this level that makes you feel a sense of urgency to save the city that's under fire. You're supposedly close to it from the start, yet you can't see it in the background, even at the level's highest point of elevation. Imagine how it would have felt if you saw Eggman's giant robots destroying the city in the background as you went through the level. The threat would have been made clear, and you would have felt propelled to stop it as quickly as possible. The music doesn't do a good job at reinforcing the threat at large either. I can think of two Sonic levels that do a great job at immersing you into the conflict. Green Forest from Sonic Adventure 2 and Terminal Velocity Act 2 from Sonic Colors. They're both full of tension, whereas Lost Valley is drained of it. We start off with Sonic falling down to the ground below. I really wish the music would kick in the moment Sonic lands instead of a second earlier. It's not a big deal, I just would have found it satisfying for the visuals and music to line up. Straight away you run into a row of rings, which is a good start to let you know what to look out for. It's around this time you'll notice that the level's design here is fairly linear. There's no challenge to overcome, no reward to shoot for, no message about the story, and nothing to complement Sonic's character. It's a thin road with no personality. Speaking of personality, I'm a little disappointed at how Sonic's is handled here. When you zip off the speed panel, he doesn't do a trick or shout anything. Sure, when you perform a homing attack, he does a trick, but it's the same one every time. There's no variety. Heck, take a look at his idle animation. 
nothing. He's not even blinking. Is, is he alive? Sonic? Oh, okay. He's okay. He's okay. Voice acting mid-stage is all well and good, but the little details I mentioned exist in other games for a reason. They add character. They add charm. They add immersion to the world you're in. When you take that away, you're not controlling Sonic anymore. You're controlling a vessel that looks like him. After landing, you're able to boost upon collecting some wisps. While blasting to top speed sounds exciting, it doesn't complement this level's design at all. You use boost and oh hey an enemy, oh they're all gone. There is zero challenge in defeating them. They don't even slow you down. Their only purpose is to stand there and wait for Sonic to bulldoze through them. A sad fate indeed. On your first playthrough, you'll most likely run into this ledge, where you will learn the most profound action of all. Jumping. The second ledge is the beginning of a section that's... Alright, you've got two enemies in a spring showing that you can string together homing attacks and target not only enemies but other objects as well. It even lets you continue after the spring, giving you a sense of, hey, I can string a lot of these together. Then you're met with a pit and a few enemies for more of a challenge. If you perform your homing attacks well, then you won't lose time and you'll even get a collectible out of it. Failure means the opposite. Does this part of the level teach the player well? Yes. Do I think it's a great part of the level? It's okay. But Zoomy Zyke, you say? It teaches the player the game's mechanics. How can you say it's only okay after that? Because it's not that fun. There are more entertaining ways to teach the same lesson. Compare this section in Lost Valley to this section in City Escape. Both sections teach risk versus reward, but how they go about teaching it is different. In City Escape, you're going at high speeds down rolling streets to perform tricks in the sky to grab item boxes and avoid the cars below. That's way more engaging of a lesson than this flat and simple design from Lost Valley, which doesn't make you feel much of anything, really. I know I just compared a section about snowboarding to a section about homing attacks, but my main point still stands. They both teach risk versus reward. One is just more fun than the other. I appreciate that they try to spice up Green Hill by making parts of it sandy, but the execution of it is lacking in the gameplay. There's only three sections where you encounter sand, but guess what? Every one of those sections is automated, so the sand actually has zero impact on the way you go through the level. I get that from a story perspective, the sand is meant to show how Eggman's affected the area, but it's difficult to feel the weight of his impact when there's nothing to show for it in the game play. Honestly, even if this problem was fixed, it wouldn't help that much, since this change of environment doesn't feel like that big of a deal to begin with. This is Green Hill, the most iconic Sonic level in existence. There was massive potential to evoke some real emotion from you here, instantly hooking you into the story. What if the level started off like the good old Green Hill you're used to? Then, as you progress, you're slowly introduced to the destruction of this once beautiful location. The ground would be scorched in flames. Chunks of the level would be falling off from lack of structural support. You'd have to speed through not full, but broken loop-de-loops and platform atop ripped apart totem poles. The sky that was once a magnificent blue would instead be covered in a harsh orange from the many fires in the area. The music should complement this disaster, not with an upbeat tone, but one that's more solemn, yet still fast-paced. Sonic would be his cocky self at the beginning of the level until he slowly realizes just how how bad things have gotten, where he'd have a shift in attitude. This would happen at the vantage point I mentioned earlier, where you'd be able to see the total destruction Eggman's inflicting upon the city you're rushing to. It only took me a few minutes to think up that concept for Lost Valley. Imagine if a big team got together and actually fleshed it out. This level could have been phenomenal! The 2D section here adds some much needed variation to the bland roads from before. It's definitely an improvement, but I wouldn't say it reaches the bar of quality I'm looking for. Boosting turns anything that would be a challenge here into a complete joke. Enemies? Just boost. Platforming section? Just boost. Want to skip to the end of the video? Just boost. Whether it be oh, shows too far, go or back. a level should complement the mechanics the player has at their disposal. If it doesn't, then we get this. A level that feels empty since practically all of its obstacles are cleared with a single button. If you want an example of a Sonic level that gets boosting done right, then look no further than Dragon Road Act 2-2 from Sonic Unleashed. Whereas Lost Valley cowers in wake of the boosting mechanic, Dragon Road embraces it. You zip through tons of varied obstacles, all meant to test your quick wits and on-the-spot decision making. Every section's been cleverly designed for maximum adrenaline pump action. Lost Valley and its simplistic, redundant design feels soulless in comparison. 
The return to 3D brings us to a splitting path, which is handled terribly here. The reason why a lot of people enjoy splitting paths is so they can experience different parts of the same level on repeat playthroughs. Here, the player input is the same no matter which path you choose, so the split is ultimately devoid of all meaning. Both paths then meet up at the end and the level's over. No feelings of fulfillment, wonder, or any other joyful emotion I've gotten from so many other levels in the past. I don't want this to end on a low note though, the whole point of breaking down this poorly designed level was to emphasize how much work goes into a well designed one. It's levels full of passion that I want to be appreciated or at least acknowledged, and that desire of mine doesn't just extend to game design, but products as a whole, whether it be oh, shows too far. Go or- back. Uh, not sure what that was about. Anyways, whether it be shows, games, videos, or any other well-intentioned creation for the world, so long as you have real passion in creating it, I'm rooting for you. As for Lost Valley, I'm calling it a lost cause. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you later.